welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. I am back for another weekly wrap up in March. This has been a down week for me in with my depression and visits and yeah, I have been getting short stuff read just like I predicted. Yeah, but let's jump into it. I read four things this week. First, I read the novelette, If You Find Yourself Speaking to God, Address God with the Informal You by John Chu. This is a novelette that has been nominated for the Nebulas, and I will leave a link down below so you can go read it as well. And this was not at all what I was expecting from that title. Instead, we're following a young man, 20s, late 20s maybe, who is an actor and he's at the gym. He's kind of aware of there's this new superhero out in the world who happens to be Asian like him and just kind of going about his life and meeting and interacting with people at the gym. And then he ends up becoming really close with a guy he calls sweatshirt guy at the gym as they start to lift together and spot for one another and basically just do a workout routine. Interjected with this is more about the superhero who is first loved by the city and then becomes the police's number one, you know, target. Kind of how Batman, uh, his kind of superhero story relationship with the police, kind of the same thing here. And then because the superhero is Asian, a lot of public Asian hate becomes a thing in this city. And the government, instead of trying to combat those who are doing Asian hate and Asian violence, are trying to capture the superhero. And so the main character, and you know, obviously ends up meeting the superhero. And that's where the use the informal you with God comes into play. As you know, as superhero stories go, it was interesting. I then I read the novelette A Dream of Electric Mothers by Woolly Talabi. And I'm holding this up because it's found in this book. So I'm not going to be able to do a link down below. You'll have to get the short story collection to read it. And this was interesting. It's following a female war minister who is at the beginning of her appointed time. And in this society, in the future, this nation has collected all the memories of its people and then they've found a way to merge that into a collective AI consciousness that they can then go to when they have questions. And so the council has a situation that they decide to go ask the AI or the collective mothers, electric mothers they call them, because they have found even though they record men as well, a female voice is more what people hear from the AI. Ends up that this war minister has an ulterior motive of why they want to access the AI collective. And I'm, yeah, gonna leave it at that. I think this was an interesting thought experiment of how a future society can work while having technology and still having normal humor, human interaction. Then I finished High Times in The Low Parliament by Kelly Robson, which was a novella that was nominated for the Hugos. I had only heard Kristen at, over at Kristen LSSF Reader talk about this, and if I remember right, she didn't really like this novella. It was weird. I think she might have even DNF'd it. And you know, she's 100% right. It is very weird. It also just drops you into the world and story without any explanation. And it's an alternate universe of what we know today, but written in historical times. So it's like a historical alternate universe that also happens to have fairies who don't like humans. 
and so the way the society with the humans and the fairies interact was very confusing and it's never fully explained but I finally got to a point where I'm like okay my own mind has made sense of these things you're also following a character who she doesn't want the explanations so even though the reader might want to know she doesn't care or she already knows it and so it's not explained to you so it's a very interesting look into a society in a world and the high times is not a pun this character does get high what i did find interesting low parliament is a parliament of many countries in the world that all have to come together and the main character is a scribe who is sent there to take notes and keep record of whatever language she understands that people are talking in and she's being sent at a time where parliament keeps getting hung votes and the ancient agreement with the fairies is if parliament can't straighten itself out by the new moon that the fairies will flood parliament so there's a lot of people who are anxious and unhappy thinking that they're going to die and then lena is not worried about that at all i mean of course she would rather not die but that's not her primary focus it, it's a very strange book so if you're looking for something weird i would go for this so then the last thing i finished this week was the short story dick pig by ian munchoir and this was another short story that was nominated for the nebulas and i will also leave a link down below and this is a horror short story but it was just very weird for me. Uh, granted, I'm not a horror reader or watcher. This is something I had to then share with my husband who does like horror and he talked a little bit about some of the genres that he thought the story was playing off of, but ultimately he didn't like the execution of the story either. I do think this author does really great character work. I mean, that main character who I don't think we ever get a name for, oh, oh, he's a trip you know, very interesting personality type. And then we see one char another character at the very, very end of the story, and she was also very interesting. So I would definitely read more things from him to find out how he writes characters, but the story and the plot overall for this one just did not work for me. I continued briefly with Reaper, just haven't been reading on my phone. A lot and I just have a uh, ebook copy so haven't been really doing a lot of ebook reading this week read a, like a few percentage points more in that then I picked up even though I knew the end by CL Polk which is another novella nominated for the nebulas and so far I'm enjoying this one I like the noir background like time period I like the juxtaposition of the main character had made an agreement with a crossroads devil almost 10 years ago she knows her time is up, almost up this is her last weekend uh, to be alive and she just wants to spend it with the girl she is in love with but she's also an investigator private investigator and has been given a very interesting case and then by her employer she is offered her soul back so now that is up to the, the stakes and so far I think how magic works in this world blended with the technology that was in this time period has been very interesting I'm enjoying it so I plan to finish this this week I have Nettle and Bone out which is a novel that was nominated for the Nebulas so probably will it, it try this this week as well and honestly, I don't know what else I'm going to read very much still in that short stuff is getting read. Yeah, so there's four more novelettes that I can access to read online, I believe. And so I'm going to finish that up and then we'll have my thoughts on those novelettes all filmed together for you. So yeah, just mood reading my way through this week, which brings me up to readathons and pilot possibilities for April.
So I am participating in G's magical readathon, the Spring Equinox. My character is doing another year of Crafts Mage. She did not finish her autumn equinox ends, and since with this readathon you get to make up your character, I'm gonna. The story I have in my head is my character got distracted by something else and then forgot to go to that last test because I, I missed it by one book and I just don't have an interest to pick it up and read it right now. So just starting over with the Crafts Mage, which means I have three prompts for inscription. My prompt is book from your top or highest shelf, which happens to be my library shelf. So it's going to be a library book. For artificery, I have start your read with a snack. So again, I can read whatever I want as long as when I start it, I start eating a snack. And then for spells and incantations, I need to choose a book that has a, that the target length is for pages is between 389 and 415. I do not have a book picked out for that last one, but for the other two, I think I'm going to pair it with my public health readathon that I'm doing. So this is a readathon that I created for my job since I work at a public health agency and there we have lots and lots of readers. This is the first time anybody else in this agency has done a readathon. I thought about trying to do, you know, announce it online as well and see if anybody online wanted to do it and then just realized, oh, because nobody else has any experience at my agency, I think that's kind of my bandwidth, especially since I'm low energy this time of year anyway. So if you want to see, here's my pretty bingo card. The prompts were selected by the different departments that I work with, and I've given them a list of things that I'm interested in. So for this bingo card, I am interested in doing the last, the bottom row. So the books I picked out for this are nonfiction. I was hoping to get at least a fiction in there, so I'm going to be re trying to read a lot of nonfiction in a month. But for the housing prompt, I chose The Color of Law, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America by Richard Rothstein. And Margaret Pernard is the one who got me interested in this one. And then also just, I live in a town that thinks it's progressive, but it also has a forgotten history of redlining, or as they called it here, or segregated populations even though they like to think about like, oh, we, we got rid of that, but you did it for a long time. So for health equity, I have chosen the book Epidemic Illusions on the Colonality, the, the, on the colon, Coloniality of Public, of Global P Public Health, I cannot speak, um, by Eugene Richardson. And I believe this is like a breakdown of how colonialism has set up our society to basically fail whenever we have an epidemic. Then for public health policies, I have Private Guns Public Health by David Hemingway. This is not anything that my public health agency is actually working on, but I am interested in this discussion of how people being so gung-ho on having private guns affects public health. So I'm interested in reading this one. And then for LGBTQ plus health, I have Refusing Compulsory Sexuality, A Black Asexual Lens on Our Sex Obsessed Culture by Sharonda Brown. I am reading a lot of nonfiction next month because, I, I mean, I'm still working on Crucible of Hell. I won't have that finished by the end of March like I really wanted to. And then for some other pile of possibilities for April, um, once I finish Reaper, I, there are three more books that my group was given for the self-published science fiction contest. I am just going to let you know what those are. Then I, we still have Light Blade by Zemil Akhtar. I read the first three chapters. I'm planning to pick this up again and see if it clicks better with me in April. And then I have The Emissary, a first contact novel, which I don't remember the author off the top of my head, but again, here's the picture. And Mouse Cage by Malcolm Cross, which my team members have had interesting comments on this one. So 
those are the three that I also am hoping to have read by the 24th of April because we want to have our scores and the finalists for the contest announced on the 1st of May. So we have that those that I'm still focused on for April, as well as reading the novellas and novel nominations for the nebulas. Kind of as they come in is pro probably what it will be. However, I do own Babel, so I hope to actually read that in April. <laughs> but I'll worry about putting that back up in a moment. So yes, so that is my pile of possibilities, my readathons that I'm planning to do. Yay. For my writing wrap up, I have been brainstorming conversations that I want my characters to have in the romance book that I'm plot going to be plotting for April. And I say conversations since my my story is going to be friends to lovers, so they know each other. They've been friends for a while. There should certain conversations that they will have to have as they progress in their relationship to have a healthy relationship because I don't want to have the miscommunication trope. My characters have enough going on. They don't need a miscommunication trope in their romance. And then for other media, I haven't actually been watching things this week. Yeah, just had a lot of things on my mind, so been doing more thinking and been busy with other things. How has your March been going? Have you had any great reads that you think should be shared on a wider basis or nominated for an award? I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day. <laughs>